Yeah, the, on the subject of power supplies, um, you know, a lot of people think, or most people maybe think, the power supply for an audio circuit is something that's off to the side and, and you know, not, not so uh, important maybe. But it really, and I like to say the power supply is half the sound of the amplifier. When you look at it, I mean, the power supply really kind of is in the single path in that each, each stage uh, gets its power, you know, from the power supply. And uh, so if you, you know, follow the signal path through the, you know, the circuit or whatever, you see, yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of connected to the power supply every step along the way in one form or another. So, uh, you know, having a, having a good quality power supply, lots of energy storage, whatever, is, um, is going to be crucial to, you know, letting the amplifier circuit work at its, in its most linear and, and, you know, best way. The power supply technology I use is called parallel resonant converter, and uh, it is uh, it's a current source that's voltage controlled, and it can charge an unlimited number of energy storage capacitors. So that's very good for audio. Um, other, uh, it, it's it's not used very often because it's expensive. There are a lot of uh, complex uh, inductive components that have to be wound, and this is expensive. Uh, people don't like, you know, wound inductive components because they're expensive, they're hard to make, yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, people will shy away from, you know, things that would use those components. But, uh, and the resonant power converter uses them in abundance. And uh, so it's, uh, um, because it, you know, it's circulating a lot of current, you need special winding techniques for some of these things. Uh, Litz wire, you need some other strange techniques to uh, reduce the heat, and, uh, which I won't <laughs> go into. But, uh, but they're, they're complicated. Um, and there's no magic IC that you can buy that does 90% of it, you know, it's like there is for, you know, the pulse width supplies uh, that are common and cheap um, that, you know, that everybody tends to use now. Linear supplies are, are good. They're, uh, they're heavy. They're not very efficient. Um, they're, uh, um, I guess those are probably the cheap things, uh, but then they have some nice uh, features about them. <clears throat> they do have a good transient response, although if you have, uh, you know, lots of energy storage capacitors, as long as you're not asking the power supply to change voltage on a step or whatever, uh, you know, make a sudden change in voltage, which you wouldn't do for an audio circuit anyway. Um, you know, linear supplies, uh, you know, are good, and uh, the energy, you know, the uh, energy storage capacitors like I use are good. Um, but the, uh, you know, the linear supplies, you, again, you would have startup issues uh, with if you know, if you have large energy storage capacitors, so that's a difficulty. Uh, it, it's possible to deal with it, but it's it's a difficulty. Um, but uh, the the big advantage of linear supplies, and you know, this is something that nobody can you know question, is they uh, don't put out the high frequency noise that all switching power supplies like to do. So if you need a, uh, an environment that's really free of high frequency noise radiation or conductive radiation or any kind of radiation like that, uh, a linear supply is, is your best bet um, and maybe your only bet. Um, so that is the niche 
that I see, you know, linear supplies, you know, falling into. Um, now the zodal circuitry itself, uh, you know, it generates its own radio frequency noise from the impedance conversion process. Um, and again, this is way above human hearing. Um, and so, you know, it's not normally a, a problem. Um, and the same can be said of, you know, switching power supplies in general is, uh, you know, the noise is oftentimes, you know, generally not a problem, but it can be. And, uh, you know, it could, it could do things like interfere with the clock in a digital, you know, server or what have you for a music server uh, or a CD player or what have you. Um, it, it could affect that. And, uh, you know, the beauty of a linear supply is it's, it's not going to affect that. Um, the linear supply uh, has some issues. Uh, if you've got a line frequency transformer, so you've got a hum that is radiated, like line frequency hum is radiated from that transformer. So putting a linear supply in a high gain phonos tube stage is going to be a non-starter. Uh, you don't want to go there. Um, I've done it when I was in my early days of building amplifiers, and no, you can't get rid of the hum. It, it just, no matter what, you can't get rid of it. So, um, uh, so in that case, you don't want to use a linear power supply unless you put it in a separate box with a long umbilical cord. Then you can, then you can do it. But, uh, you know, that's the only way to do it. And uh, so, um, I, back in 19, late 1970s, when I was doing my TF10 preamp, and I spent, I don't know how much time trying to learn how to do, uh, and that was a pulse width modulated supply, by the way, that I did on the first, you know, switching supply I did for the TF10 preamp. Uh, the reason I did that is I wanted to put the power supply in the same chassis as a preamp that had a phono stage. And the linear supply wasn't going to hack it for that hum reason. But the switching supply worked just superbly under those conditions. There was no interference. Uh, I even did a test on the, when I was thinking about doing this, where I artificially made a high amplitude 35 kilohertz signal which is what the frequency of the TF10's phone, uh, power supply works at. I artificially, uh, from a signal generator, took a 35 kilohertz you know, square wave or some waveform and added it to an audio frequency, put it through an amplifier and listened to the composite uh, audio signal with this modulation of 35 kilohertz on top of it to see, at a realistic level, to see whether I could hear a difference, whether that modulation was present or not, and I couldn't hear a difference. So that told me that the switching power supply uh, was not going to cause me a problem from that noise standpoint uh, interfering with the audio signal. So that was my green light to make the uh, switching power supply for the TF-10. And that's you know why I feel confident that in the Zotal and the and the um, you know the, the you know the Zotal or anything else that like that that has a you know the Zotal technology itself which makes the noise or the power supply that makes the noise that it wasn't going to you know cause a problem with the audio signal. 